This is a recording of one of the first successful tests of every tower mechanic for my scale model of Dorney Park's Demon Drop. I know you probably want to see me dropping the cabin, and we'll get there, but we have a lot of stuff to cover first. If this is your first time seeing this project, then I highly recommend checking out my first video from a couple weeks ago. But the Cliff Nose version is that I'm building a scaled model of Demon Drop, which is a freefall tower style ride currently located at Doherty Park. I've split the construction of my model into two main sections, the tower and the run out. In my last video, I discussed how I designed and constructed the tower. I had to make some design decisions to make the ride a little bit more 3D printable, and I also showed how I kept the scale and some of the construction of the tower structure. That took nearly 20 minutes to discuss. So in this video, we're going to be going at a little faster pace. I'm going to be finishing the tower structure, putting in all the mechanics, all the cosmetic pieces, and I'll finally show you that video in its entirety where I drop one of the first cabins. So let's pick back up where we left off. So things are going really smoothly and then they weren't. Uh, so I'm gonna have to end up redesigning this top piece a little bit. Um, so basically the challenge I'm having is number one, the cabin, I have a little test cabin here, is actually hitting on a lip in the track right here. That's a simple fix, just bump out the notch a little bit. But unfortunately it does mean that I need to get these two pieces of track completely reprinted. Because they're larger pieces, I can't print them myself and I don't want to split them into smaller pieces, so I'm going to have to wait a couple days to get that printed. Um, one of the mechanics I was hoping would work out was using like a ramp to redirect the cabin into the transfer position so it would lift up a little bit and then drop onto a little ramp inside the tower here, the tower track to push it forward. And that's actually how the real life ride works. But I, I just don't think it's gonna work very well because there is some minor bumps and these things weigh approximately nothing. These cabins don't have very much momentum. So any little bump and it's going to get stuck. So what I was originally designing was a push arm system like this. You can see it moving back and forth. And I think that'll work way, way better. The problem is it does not push far enough. So I've actually redesigned this front piece here to have a notch so this can push out just a little further. And while I was at it, I also put in some um, supporting arms for these vertical pieces because these are really thin PET G. If you don't know, PET G is fairly flexible. It's not as stiff as say PLA or some other uh, 3D printing filaments. It, so I have designed in some supports here to hold this upright so that should prevent any kind of bowing and pinching. Um, honestly, I wasn't totally shocked that I'd have to reprint one or two of these things. Um, unfortunately, the parts I need to reprint are these two track pieces and this front piece and those are both parts or yeah, all three parts I cannot print myself. Uh, they're large parts that need printed on a the Prusa XL. Um, so that's annoying. But a weekend later and I had the new parts in hand, but unfortunately to swap these parts does mean a fair bit of disassembly, and that's what you're seeing here. Everything was designed to be screwed together, which does make taking apart a bit easier. I originally went to glue this all together, and had I done that, well, I would probably just throw it in the trash and moved on to a different project. But to better understand what went wrong with these parts, I'll go ahead and explain how the tower mechanisms work. The tower consists of three sections of track, not including the section just outside the load and unload area. The first is the lift section where the cabins are raised four feet into the air. The second is a transfer section where they are moved horizontally into the drop position. And finally, the last is the drop position where cabins fall down the tower and into the brakes below. To navigate these track switches, I've built in a series of trap doors that the cabins will travel through during its layout. They come in a set of two, one's for each side of the cabins, and some of these actually work very similar to how the actual ride operates. I've built into the model six trapdoor mechanisms, of which five are on the tower, 
and the last is at the end of the runout section where the cabins are uprighted. Currently, I'm using three of those five, but I can add the additional two if I feel I need it. The cabins encounter the first set of trapdoors at the base of the tower. The cabins push the trapdoor up and over as they pass through, then fall back down when the cabin's in place. This locks the cabin into the lift track. This is the first of the two I'm not using right now, as it works fine without it. The lift will raise the cabins up where they will encounter the second and third trap door simultaneously. The transfer track needs to allow the cabin body to pass through the bottom before being placed onto it. To achieve this, the two trap doors are located in the spots where the bearings need to pass through the transfer track. They are this lever design where they are pushed up to allow the cabins to pass through and then when the cabins pass all the way through, the trap doors fall down and the lift will set the cabins back onto it. This was the mechanism I was referring to earlier that caused me to reprint these large track pieces. I didn't really adjust that notch to the right size, so the cabins were able to pass through from the lift. So to fix that, I just had to bump the notch out a little bit in CAD and then get the parts reprinted. And it works fine, and I will hopefully never have to reprint these parts again. The fourth trap door is to lock the cabins into the drop track. I can't use a sloped surface to move it up and down like the lock at the bottom of the tower. That's because the front set of bearings need to pass completely through and this design would trap them inside. So I designed an electronic system to raise and lower it using a pinion connected via a rack and pinion. However, I also don't have this installed as it doesn't seem to need it, but I can add it if I need to. The fifth and final trap door on the tower is the drop door. This trapdoor holds the bottom front and rear bearings as the cabin is pushed into the drop position. To drop the cabins, two servo motors pull the trapdoors, which drops them. Technically, it's two trapdoors, but they are physically the same part, so I'm counting it as one. We'll come back to how the drop system works at the end of the video. Now that we know a little bit more about the tower structure and its track setup, and I have those parts installed, we can go ahead and get the lift mechanism completely finished. Now, it's a pretty simple mechanism, but I'll go ahead and explain it real quick. The lift is powered by a brushed DC motor with a gearbox attached to it. You probably saw me install this in the last video. I bought these because they're cheap and I'm kind of paying the price for it. The motor sits on the base of the tower and drives a timing belt along the length of the tower. This is the same kind of belt that you would find on a 3D printer but I expect this drive system won't last forever. These motors were really cheap, and I didn't think about the radial forces on that gearbox from the belt tension. The driver gear is cantilevered off the output shaft, and I'm almost certain that it's too much force. This is what I expect will be the first bit to fail on the model, and to fix this will require reprinting the gray base plate, and I don't want to do that right now. When it breaks, I will fix it properly. I have a proper fix already designed, I just don't want to deal with it right now. Along the back of the tower is a third rail that the belt runs along. It's shaped like an elongated hexagon so that a lift carriage can slide on it while staying attached to it. The carriage has a dock that grabs onto the cabin to lift it up the tower. When the cabin is placed on the transfer track, the carriage will return to the bottom where it will grab the next cabin and repeat the cycle. Cabins move from the lift track to the drop track via the transfer track. To move them, I'm using two small mechanisms. First, that back set of trap doors in the lift track are actually sloped. When the cabins are lowered onto it, the slope allows the cabins to roll off the lift and onto the transfer track. I believe this is actually how the real ride moves the cabins off its lift. Once onto the transfer track, a push arm will push the cabins into the drop position. The push arm slides along a perpendicular rail and is driven using another gear DC motor and a belt. It's the same as the lift, just a different system. At some point this will be automated, but for testing right now I need to manually plug and unplug it into my power supply to run it. Finally, let's talk about the drop. The trap door sits along the outer portion of the rails with clamps for it to slide in and out of the track. One end is connected to a linkage that extends to the back of the tower. Behind the lift track sits a pair of servo motors. When the ride calls for a drop, the servos rotate, which pulls the linkage and therefore the trap door. 
Currently, this is the only mechanism that is partially automated with a microcontroller. So far, the system has worked perfectly, and it's super satisfying to drop the cabins. At least partially. I don't have the rest of the ride built right now, so dropping them will either break the cabins, break some of the track, or both. The last part that I didn't tell you about before for this tower is the cosmetic part. It needs to look right. I'm extremely pleased with the look of it so far. The color's great, and the look of the printed parts is exactly what I wanted. The two last things I need to make it look like the real deal are the stairs and the cap piece with the logo attached. I tried to keep as many details to the stairs as possible while still making them printable. I was only able to add a handrail to one side of the face, and that's the face that was printed on the bed. But I think it looks fine and just having them, even if they aren't perfect, is still pretty cool. The cap has the important job of looking cool and hiding some of the electronics. The front face is black and the other three are teal. This is a large multicolor print and it came out perfect. The logo is printed in an orange PLA because, well, frankly that's what I had on hand. If I had some orange PETG, I could have printed it with the rest of the cap as one part, but PETG and PLA do not fuse together while printing, so the logo is glued into place and so far it's the only part that's been glued in this whole model. I'm super pleased with how it came out. There are some small differences to the actual ride, but they look very similar. The logo actually glows in the dark, which is very cool to see at night. The structure is super rigid, and I have zero concerns of how it will handle moving cabinets. The floor, however, is another thing. Our apartment was clearly built with the Fireness Home Depot material, and the floor has high spots and low spots. The tower needs to be level to operate properly. But to do so, I need to find a spot that I can level it with. I built in leveling feet that just require spinning the screws and you can level it to the floor. But it does need to be in a spot where it won't be in the way for the foreseeable future because if I need to move it, I have to re-level it. There's only really one spot I can put it. So I pulled a great adventure and took down this Connects coaster. To be honest, I have a different plan for another one, a record-breaking launch coaster, when I finish up the Demon Drop, so I'm not totally sad to see it go, and it was taking up a fair bit of space. Alright, you've waited long enough, I'll go ahead and show the full video of dropping that cabin. Pretty cool, huh? So a couple things to note on this video. Like I said, kind of the jerky motion is caused by me manually unplugging and plugging in the motors. But at some point this will be automated, I just need to get to that point. But for right now, the tower is mechanically complete. The only thing left, like I said, is automation and I need to put in the feeder wheels at the bottom. But I'm going to consider that part of the station, which is the next project. I think that's going to do it for this update. The model is about halfway done and thankfully the second half should be much simpler to assemble. Next I'm going to assemble the runout and the brakes and eventually we're going to get to the controls. It's really exciting to see it all come together. If you are enjoying this project and have any ideas for a future project, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love some suggestions for projects after I finish my record breaking launch coaster. Also. As a treat to those who have made it to the end, I've uploaded the print file of the logo onto printables, so you can use it in your own projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next part.